You're listening to the Bearded Theologians podcast, hosted by Zach Bechtold and Matt Franks. We hope you enjoy today's podcast and check us out online at beardedtheologians.com. You're listening to the Bearded Theologians podcast, hosted by Matt Franks. And Zach that I've told. This week on the Bearded Theologians, uh, obviously I'm not in my office. Uh, I'm actually uh, hanging out at the Uniting Methodist Conference, um, listening to um, some things going on there. And um, Zach, Zach is going to be on the road, um, headed to be with some family and, and uh, doing a wedding this weekend. And so we thought we'd uh, squeeze in a recording, uh, not on a normal time, on a, on a Monday. So, um, so we're still in this whole theme of looking through the book of Ephesians through the lectionary text. And so this week we'll be looking at Ephesians 2, uh, 11 through uh, 22. And so Zach, as, as you've read through this, and as we kind of talked about a little bit, what are some things that kind of pop up for you? Well, I, th- I think it's, it's, it's fitting that where you're at uh, the United Methodist Conference, uh, and then just kind of what we look at as a whole in our world uh, this section of Ephesians is is about unity. It's about being together um, and, and about uh, finding hope in that. And, um, you know, it, it, the writer of this is writing to this church that, that it's a good, strong church, but they're beginning to see these influence of people uh, around them in and are, are, are creating divisions and creating these things between Jew and Gentile and between each other. And, and, and the writer's going, wait, hold on. Uh, there's hope in this unity, you know, um, it, it, it he be, in, in verse 13, uh, but now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ for Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people, uh, and then it and it goes on, and it's it's just this idea that, you know, we were all once in this place where we were excluded, or it was us versus them, or or whatever, and it comes down to, hey, hold on, remember, Christ unites us, um, and and we need to remember that, um, and and we do a bad job of that sometimes, uh, we we like to remember all the other things that we we disagree on and we we don't quite see eye to eye when jesus is really what brings us all together regardless of who we are where we are what we believe um if we're christians if we're in the church christ is that centerpiece i think well um tonight in worship uh emmanuel cleaver the third talked about um that there are non-essentials, you know, there are essential things that we all agree on. There are essential things that we agree are non-negotiable. And then there are those non-essential things. And he related it towards marriage, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but if you're a single person, you know, I felt like right. that, that kind of, but I also think that like, there's some, there's some truthfulness in that, that mm-hmm. Zach, there are some things that you and I totally agree on. Yeah. And then there's some other things that we do not agree on. Uh, obviously, um, you like the Colorado Rockies for some reason, and that's okay. Like uh, baseball. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I tolerate your uh, your team. I um, do not have to get my hopes up, but they <laughs> come through for me every few years. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> um, you know, and we obviously disagree on baseball teams, but that's okay. I mean, that, that doesn't uh, divide our relationship, even though. I mean, let's be like, fair. One of our of teams month, fired their manager this week. <laughs> yeah, but in the 25 years that you have been in existence you've had I'm trying to figure it out <laughs> you've had just as many managers if not more than we have in that time still period. learning still learning, <laughs> still learning. <laughs> but I, I think that that's true i think far too often we allow those things um to divide us that really should never really yeah. divide us and that um right. I mean, I was thinking about this today while I was driving down and that part of our problem is, is that we can understand Jesus. Like we agree that Jesus is Lord and Savior as Christians, mm-hmm. but the struggle that we have is interpreting scripture. And so then I think of like this last week I preached on Mark 10, um, the story where the disciples were holding back the children from coming in 
getting right. to hang out with Jesus. And, and what I talked about there was, is that the disciples have the right belief. They have the understanding of who God was and, and that who Jesus was. And, and they had the right belief in mind, but it was their practice that didn't make sense. And they were pushing back the kids from coming and being with Jesus. Their, their orthopraxy was not what it needed to be. And Jesus corrected them. He, he didn't scold them. Like notice in that, in that scripture, he never scolds them. And, and just like with this and Paul, Paul's not scolding us he's just reminding us that that you know christ is the center of our lives he's the, he's the peace i like i like in how the new uh the common english translates like that christ is our peace uh he made both jews and gentiles into one group we are together um and that line in first corinthians um uh 12 we are parts of the body and you know and parts of each other um and i think far too often we forget that that we are really in this together and he brings it to a close he says christ Mm -hmm. is building you into a place where god lives through the spirit and and i think of that whole idea of god when we allow god in god will overflow us with his love and grace he doesn't just you know he doesn't have and this is uh cleaver used this too and i kind of like this as well he doesn't just take your cup and he says fills it up to the top and says that's enough god over overflows it Overflows, yeah, and so it makes an influence on those around you who, you know, that mm-hmm. sort of thing. And I think mm-hmm. that when we allow God to not just meet our needs, but we allow God to overflow us in us in love, it's amazing to see what can happen, uh, not only for our congregations but also for ourselves when we allow God's love really in to penetrate us and take away those non-essentials uh, and and shape them and mold them and make them into new withholding in the core who God mm-hmm. really is in our lives. I think that when we can do that, it's amazing to see how not only just how God loves us and cares for us, but also how we can live into the spirit as well. Right. Well, and I think that's maybe the thing that we miss most often. Uh, I love that pouring analogy. I used it uh, something similar a couple of weeks ago uh, for, for a uh, sermon illustration. And uh, actually, you know, poured water into cups and made a mess in the sanctuary. It's great. Um, but it, but it illustrates that point is we, we have to come in and let, we have to allow ourselves to, to let God pour into us, you know? Um, and we're, we as people have this really bad habit of not allowing ourselves uh, to slow down or um, to admit that we're tired or admit that we, we need help. Um, from anyone, much less the Holy Spirit, right? Um, and so we, we have to have that permission or have to be intentional about coming to God and, and letting that spirit move, which means we have to let go of a lot of things, those, those non-essentials, like you said. Um, we, have to, we, we have to let go of, we have to be right. You know, what I say, what I believe is the right thing. Um, and, and be willing to say, well, you know what? We may disagree on on some things, but we are still united in Christ. Uh, we are still brought to peace in that. And we're going to let the Holy Spirit work through, through this relationship, through these conversations. And at the end of the day, we may not agree, but I still love you. And you are my brother or sister or sibling in Christ. And that has to be what we, we have to hang our hat on that. Uh, instead of fighting to say, well, I'm right. Oh, and you're wrong. You know, we, we, Oh God, we, I think there's just a disconnect there. Well, and I think it's because we've forgotten that in the story, the bigger story of, of not only just scripture, but past scripture, you know, the story is past scripture, mm-hmm. is that when we think that God's going to operate in one way, God usually flips the right. script. Right. And we want the script to be our script and not what God has um, mm-hmm. in store for us. And, um, you know, if we, if we just really, could you imagine if we just really trusted God, like all of us, like, I I know we could easily say, yeah, we do it. You know, I'm a pastor. I do it easily. And, and I I don't know if that's the truth. I don't think Uh, it is. um, You know, there's some times where I really doubt like, okay, Lord, you know, sure. sure, I'll, I'll, I'll trust you. And I'm not really for sure. Cause I'm like, okay, I'm waiting for the next bad thing or the wait for the shoe to drop or yeah. um, And I forget, like, I mean, I was thinking about this this afternoon um, and Cleaver brought it up and then it just kind of like, man, this is maybe what I need to focus on is that, you know, God does awesome things mm-hmm. if we just open ourselves up to it. And right. I think that that's, that's the, that's the piece that this last little part here is saying is that right. if you allow Christ to build into you, 
right god will live through you in this uh, through the spirit and so you know i think this week i would encourage you this week that if, you know if you're listening to this to prepare for a sermon we probably just gave you your whole sermon and good luck and please make sure you quote us <laughs> and tell everybody your your congregation to buy our t-shirts and all that stuff um but if, right. <laughs> if not um would encourage you to stop and think and listen like zach kind of talked about and ask yourself are, are you really trusting that god is yeah. working through you and on you there, there has to be a willingness there you know you you look back at jesus and and really any miracles right uh, but especially the healings there's always a willingness from this person being healed a willingness to come and humble themselves a willingness to say yes a willingness to to hear to respond um, a willingness to get up and go, right? Um, and then you you come across the rich man that says, you know, what do I have to do? And, and basically, Jesus is, you've got to be willing, uh, you know, to give it all up, right? And he's like, well, I don't want to do that. So he goes, you know, and, and maybe we too often find ourselves not being willing to say, what do I got to do? Oh, I'll do that. You know, it like say trusting. Sometimes we're not so willing to trust because we, we want that control. We want that certainty. We want, uh, to do all these things and we forget about faith. Uh, we forget about the hope and peace that comes from that and saying, God, I'm willing. I, I trust you on this. I'll go, I'll do, you know, let's, let's go. And, uh, I think we forget about how awesome the Holy spirit is. Uh, maybe we don't talk about it enough. Uh, maybe we just forget uh, or maybe we're just that kind of stubborn people that wants the control and wants to wants to wants to know the plan and the A, Bs, and Cs of it. Um, I don't know. People are different, but there's all of those reasons. So maybe this week we we ask you to encourage you to just trust God and let God to work on you and work through you and see what happens. Yeah. So we encourage you to go online, uh, go through our go through all of our social uh, connections and connect with us uh, through social media. This past week. Uh, Actually, this whole week, we're honoring our fourth anniversary of Global Young People's Convocation with general yes. uh, di different memes. Uh, it was this time um, four years four ago years. that um, Zach and I survived a typhoon and uh, all sorts of other fun events and shenanigans um, and, and <laughs> sort of created this podcast because of it. Yes, um, I, I blame natural acts of God and lack of sleep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. Um, so, so we're gonna have some fun with that this week, kind of honoring that and remembering that. And then um, we're also um, encouraged just go on our website, look at all of our cool stuff. We got a lot of cool stuff. Um, yeah. Actually, just uh, went back the other day. I went back and listened to the Shane Claiborne uh, episode the other day, just because it's kind of it's a good episode and he does a good it's job. A episode, yeah. Um, and so, you know, we'd encourage you to just go back and listen. Listen to season three and season two. Those are great seasons. Uh, season one, we're still trying to figure things out. But um, yeah, I put season now. one on when you're doing laundry uh, and you're not really looking to listen. <laughs> you just want yes. some background noise. <laughs> so for the Bearded Theologians, I'm Matt Franks. I'm Zach Bechtold. Thanks for checking us out. We hope you've enjoyed the conversations that we've had today on the Bearded Theologians Beardcast, and we'd encourage you to continue those conversations online at beardedtheologians.com or on our Facebook page. We also hope that you pick up a couple of coffee mugs to uh, satisfy your coffee mug collection. Have a good day.